Hey guys, what's up? It's Indy. I'm going to talk about my kit and some of the extra tools and stuff I took for a 28 Trans Am. Uh, for a helmet, I took the Euro Synth MIPS. Uh, MIPS is, is a design that's supposedly to reduce concussions. I'll show you that here in a second. All of these silver stickers are actually reflective stickers made by lightweights. And you can get those, I think they come in packs of about 200 for about $12. They are extremely bright and they are durable and at the same time they're also very easy to peel off. So MIPS is a safety feature that I mentioned to reduce concussions. It actually moves around in the helmet. So you can see that insert good grip on it it's hard to do with one hand here anyways um, let's try this over here so you can just see that little bit of movement there so the theory is that when you hit your head like that the inside has a little bit of movement and it will keep you from having a concussion and uh, I personally, when I did the tra my trail race last year, I crashed three times. And one time I hit my head pretty good. And I felt the shifting of the helmet. And the helmet shifts instead of your neck or your head. And I'm totally a believer in it. So I would recommend that. Um, this is a little bag I had in between my aero bars. It's called the Fuel Belts. It's on Amazon for five bucks. It was basically what I kept the pair of glasses that I wasn't using at the, at the time in. And I also kept um, tire plugs in there as well in case I needed those, which I only needed one. Um, I did have carried this heady little Sasquatch eyeglass cleaner that my buddy Jay gave me. So that was in there. Um, I had a set of clear lenses. Those are the second pair I bought during the race because the first pair wore out. Um, these are some Jim Marti cycling glasses. I think they were 20 bucks on Amazon. And those have been great. They lasted the whole race and I will continue to use them. Uh, I'm not good with glasses. I tend to lose them or I tend to break them or scratch them, so I buy cheap stuff. Uh, this is the little man purse I was talking about. Uh, I put my, I put any cash I had in the bottom pocket, my credit cards up top, and then I could fold it and put it in my feed bag or my half pack. And then there's a little slot in the back here that I was able to fit my phone in. So anytime I got off the bike, I was able to just sling this around my neck and walk in the stores. I went with uh, Specialized Expert Cross Country Shoes. They're the shoes I used for my mountain bike race last year. They have uh, probably 16,000 miles on them, so they're getting up there. Um, I did replace the BOA system in them, and when I replaced them, the old one actually looked fine. It worked okay, um, so that has never failed but they will send you a replacement for free. I do find that the Shimano um, cleats wear out about every 5,000 miles. I'll start getting some squeaking. So I have to replace those, not often, but every 5,000 miles. Um, after about 10,000 miles, I also replaced the insole uh, body geometry, and you can choose one, two, or three in terms of uh, the supportiveness there on the arch which is kind of nice. So anyways, new insoles, they feel like new shoes. Um, I'm going to see how many miles I can get out of those. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe 30,000. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, I had, I carried two extra tubes with me the whole time. I like these little cinch straps. They're Velcro straps. Um, so I was actually able to cinch these around the frame of my bike. And then after I had mailed some stuff back, like my sleeping bag, I actually had room in the uh, Terrapin bag here, and I was able to switch them in the bag. But to keep weight a little bit even, for the first you know half of the race, I had them on my bike frame. I only used um, 
one inner tube the whole time to change out my rear tire before Newton. Um, the original pair of socks I had were these Icebreaker wool socks. Um, and I don't love all of Icebreaker's products, but their socks are really nice. I am not a fan of Smart Wool. Um, they don't last very long and they don't breathe very well, so I tried Icebreaker's and they were great. Um, I got caught in some rain and I stayed in a post office that night and I dried them out and the very next morning I was in a hailstorm. So everything I had dried out was soaked and my feet for riding through the night uh, were already in rough shape. So I was near West Yellowstone and I actually saw a, f a fly fitter outfit station and I went in there and they had some drinks and stuff so I bought a Red Bull and I bought these Fitz. I, I want to say they're probably Fitz OK socks. But um, they recommended them. They're merino wool. So I wore those basically after, uh, all the way from West Yellowstone to Walden, which was only a couple days, I think. So I only had to carry a couple pairs of socks. And I just put these on the arrow bars and let them dry out. Um, these were comfortable, but they definitely do not look as durable. But they were nice in a pinch. For the first half of the race, I also used uh, long fingered gloves. These are the Pearl Izumi Divide gloves. Um, and I bought them for my race last year, my trail race, but I ended up not using them because of the pressure points that these pads create. And I didn't think it would be a big deal during the road bike race because there's a lot less vibrations, but I still got hot spots where those pads are. And I'm keeping them just to use for short rides. You know, they're kind of expensive, 30 bucks or whatever, but I cut the thumbs out of them so that I could use my touchscreen phone um, my touchscreen phone, basically once I swipe it open, um, it's a Samsung and it's waterproof so I don't have to worry about the elements and it has a lot of voice activation so I can actually take pictures just by yelling capture at it. I used um, Louis Garneau uh, CB Neo Power Shorts um, and I used these for the entire race. They were awesome. Uh, you can see that they've actually faded because of the sun. So I guess that'll happen when you're outside for 18, 19 days in a row and 5,000 miles or so of use. Um, there's a little bit of um, little stretching here. It's kind of hard to show with one hand where the seams are kind of coming apart, but um, I have definitely say I've got my, I got these on like a flash shell on Amazon for 60 bucks. So I definitely got my money's worth. And uh, I like the bottom part here is actually reflective as well. So, you know, it's um, same with these gloves that have reflective material and the Specialized has a little bit of reflective. It's always good to add some reflective stuff. So um, what I carried in the bag, uh, a lot of stuff, goes in these little bags and then it will go in a dry bag. I, I left them out of the separate dry bag in addition to this dry bag just so I could take them out and kind of show you pretty easily what's in there. But a uh, patch kit, which I never needed. I have some valve extenders uh, for the 55 millimeter rims. Um, those are the tire plugs um, right there. They're also called slabs of bacon. Um, I've got the adapter in case you need to use um, a pump at, say, a gas station to, to refill your tires pretty quick. But with that Lazine Micro HD pump, um, you don't really ever have to do that. Kind of give you a look at what a tire patch looks like. For those of you who are not familiar with tubeless tires, you can peel one of these out and you basically stick the middle of it in there and then if you have a cut or a hole that's really big in your tire that's not going to seal you just jam it right in there and so basically that's going to fill up that air pocket in your tire and the sealant will do the rest and i had a gash in my front tire uh, that i had to do that with and i rode 500 miles on it and it worked great and you can't feel it there's like no lumpiness or anything like that um, a spare charger at post offices, I would charge up my cash battery if it needed it. Um, it really didn't need it, but while you're there, you might as well plug it in. This is a little spacer for my 
uh, integrated seat post in case I wanted to rise it, uh, raise it up or lower it. Um, tire boot is in there, uh, which is always good. Never had to use that though. This is a patch kit for my sleeping pad. I uh, have a little uh, fish, not a fish, but um, kind of looks like a fish hook. It's a suture kit, so that's nylon string, blue string there. And that's uh, if you tear your sidewall and you can't repair it with a tire boot, you can at least sew it together and that'll, that'll hold it together until you can probably find a bike shop for the 0 0.2 ounces that it weighs. It's definitely worth carrying. I had two set of quick, quick links, Shimano 11 speed. I ended up using one extra cable. Uh, this was an extra cable for the uh, Sinwave Beacon and tire lube. So I love Dumont Tech tire lube. I would not recommend taking the blue formula. That's kind of their mountain bike formula. I would use the yellow formula, the light formula. And one of the mistakes I made was over lubing my chain. I was, you know, the only race I've done like this was a mountain bike race last year. And I used, uh, basically every morning you woke up and, and had to lube your chain. So I kind of did that for the first two days and realized that I was using way too much lube. And that kind of was, was not good. It's not good to over lube. Uh, these are my warm weather gloves. These are outdoor research. These are the lobster mitten styles and they're waterproof. They do get a little um, sweaty inside. Like their breathability is not as great as I would like it to be. But uh, they have a lifetime warranty. I've you know, put a ton of miles on them. I do a lot of winter biking here in Illinois and they're pretty fantastic. And you know, you can just ball them up and throw them in the bag. They uh, pack down pretty small. Um, probably my favorite piece of kit is the X-Ped inflatable pillow. So this weighs a ounce and a half and it's blows up in just a few seconds. I won't blow it up for you, but I'll give you a little look at it. Um, it kind of has this soft felt material, and then on the back it has the actual, the big valves. Don't buy anything inflatable these days if it doesn't have the big valves because they are 10 times quicker to fill up and to release the air. And once you're done with the race, you can just throw that in the wash. Um, I used two different bivy bags for the race. I mailed, I'll show you the second one later, but the one I used for the first half is made by Titanium Goat. And it's called their Kestrel Bivy. So it just packs up in that little bag. And I'll kind of lay it out here for you. This is made of Sil Nylon. Uh, I think it weighs six and a half, seven ounces, but it kind of has the the bathtub here on the bottom so the sides are actually raised up off of the ground so I thought this would be better for the colder weather um, it just has this little six inch part on the top that's the mesh so in terms of uh, keeping you warm it's going to keep you a little bit warmer but I thought for the second half of the race I would bring um, Bora gear bivy sack and that was actually a really good call because the Bora gear as you'll see, uh, has the top part is almost all completely nylon. And this one is made out of a different material called argon. And it's very similar to uh, sill nylon. So I usually waterproof these before I go on any sort of big adventure and clean them. But you can see um, the difference here in terms of the bug netting. This one is just way more breathable they're the same weight uh, if i had to go choose one for all around i would definitely go with the bore gear just because it's more versatile and um you know if it's raining you're probably not going to be sleeping much in a bivy bag anyways uh for the first half of the race and a few days into the second half i kept my uh, sleeping pad let me get it out here for you and I used uh, Sea to Summit Ultralight. Uh. 
This is the uh, Sea to Summit ultralight small sleeping pad. And it says it's the small size, and as you can see, it's um, it's less than six feet. I think it's two inches less than six feet, so I can pretty much squeeze my whole body on there. And I love that it's insulated, so anytime you're in the cold elements, it'll keep you colder. And same with warm, you just have to bring less gear. And that weighs 12 ounces which is pretty good for an insulated sleeping pad. And I've got about 30 days on that. Uh, the Bora Gear bivy bag, I have about 50 days. And the Kestrel, I have about 15 days. So I um, haven't really had any issues in terms of those products. Uh, the first thing I bought when I knew I was gonna do this race and after I finished the trail race was I started looking for a light packable sleeping bag. So this is the uh, sea to Summit Spark 2 and I've used this in some pretty cold temperatures uh, here's the temperature ratings right here um, I've taken it down to not 9 degrees <laughs> that is that is pretty extreme I've taken it down to 20 degrees and I think I had my um, I, I, I tried it without the, the sleeping pad because I didn't think I was going to bring the sleeping pad for this trip and then it was a last minute addition and I ended up bringing it, but um, I took it down to the, the sleeping bag down to 20 degrees and I had all my clothes on and I stayed warm. I've since learned that uh, a friend told me you should take all of your clothes off and if you're gonna do anything with them, put them um, underneath your sleeping bag because when you have, say, your rain clothes on, you're actually blocking your heat from getting into this down insulation that the sleeping bag has so you're kind of negating the fact that you have this wonderful insulation uh, with your crappy rain gear on so yeah that's uh 850 loft the sea to summit spark 2 i believe it weighs 16 and a half ounces so just over a pound um i had for a music player uh scan disc 16 gig sport so this is waterproof I uh, rode through my rainstorms with this on uh, and no issues at all. I actually was able to use the same pair of headphones the entire time. I had a backup pair of headphones that uh, I had just because the headphones you get at gas stations are pretty hit or miss on whether or not they're going to sound good. And it's nice to have good sounding music. Um, and the last big event that I did, I went through four pairs of headphones. So I was pretty surprised that I only went through, I, I have the same pair of headphones and they st still work well. This is the Anchor battery that I talked about. This is a 10,000 milliamp. Um, and it worked pretty well. Um, I did have some issues with um, this port right here, the USB port. It got a little, the connectivity was not great towards the end of it. So. I wrote them and they have a, I think a year and a half warranty, so I just need to send that in and they'll send me a new one. Uh, but it worked pretty well. Uh, these are my rain pants. They weigh, I think, an ounce and a half. These are Patagonia Houdini pants, size medium, and I'm 5'10". Um, they are lightweight. They're about a third of the weight of, of what I've used in the past, which are... I use some marmot precip pants and the marmot precips are actually a, a much thicker material but they are they pack two to three times the size and what i found was interesting was that these breathe much better and even though they breathe better they are actually warmer than the marmot pants so they cost about twice as much i think they're hundred dollar retail i think i got them on sale for 80 but using them for cycling um, they come up uh, kind of actually where my tan line is right there so a little bit above my ankle when I'm doing my pedal stroke so if I had to try them on again I bought these online I didn't buy them in a store I would recommend trying them on before you buy them in a store um, because I would go with a larger size just so that it reached all the way down through the pedal stroke the shirt that I use was also Patagonia. Uh, their gear is a 
I mean, second to none in terms of breathability, durability. I love their, their company policies. They support a lot of other countries, developing countries with fair wages, and they encourage you to send your gear in once it's been um, used, and they will try and repair it, and if they can't repair it, they'll usually give you some sort of credit. This is something I wouldn't be able to send in, though. <laughs> uh, so this is their um, Capilene, you can kind of see it, lightweight base layer. This is their very lightest base layer. I've found that this is the only thing I can really ride in, and it continues to perform very well even once it's been coated with salts and sweat and dirt and mud. It's it's awesome. Um, I took the sleeves off in Walden, Colorado. I cut them off um, at the post office because it was going to start getting hot. We were getting into Kansas and Pueblo and Cannon City. So I'll continue to use that. I personally have found that a lot of uh, bike gear is just very underwhelming in terms of performance. It's so underwhelming they, they won't even tell you what the breathability rating is. They don't tell you what the um, rainproof rating is. They just assume that you're just going to buy it because you have money, which doesn't really fly for me. Um, my warm layer was a same sort of thing as my base or my um, jersey shirt or my all day shirt. It's just the uh, thermal weight. This is a Patagonia thermal weight capilene base layer. I originally had a nano puff vest, but I wanted something that had its, that had sleeves so I didn't have to carry arm warmers just to have one less thing to carry. And this actually weighed a little bit less. And I found when I paired it with the rain jacket, all three of those together, I could ride down to about 30 degrees. And I didn't really anticipate that I was going to be riding in anything less than that. Anything colder, I should say. And that packs up about the same, if not a little bit smaller. Like I said, it's a little bit more lightweight than an ultra down vest. And it's a lot cheaper too. I think it was 60 or 70 bucks on sale. Uh, I did have a Pearl Azumi. I think this is their Escape. Or it's their Pro barrier and this is they don't tout this as being completely rainproof you can see i tried to waterproof some of the seams it just didn't work out very well it's basically a dwr coating um so it breathes pretty well breathability is almost more important to me than uh waterproofness because anything that's waterproof i found it, it just usually doesn't breathe so uh, this I got soaked in a few times, but it still keeps you warm. I will tech wash this and then re-DWR. That DWR just tends to come off after a while, so it'll it'll last for the race. At the end, you're going to start to notice it won't perform as well, but it does pretty good. For leg warmers, I had uh, Castelli sun warmers, so they're not actually thermal. They're just... Um, they're their sun leggings and just having that little bit of barrier between the wind and your legs uh, paired with the Patagonia Houdini pants I found was perfect um, in Walden I mailed like I said that uh, Bora gear bivy bag for the summertime I mailed back my sleeping bag I kept my sleeping pad mailed the other bivy bag back mailed my base layer back and a few other things and I picked up, these are Pearl Azumi, I think it's their Aero Gloves, so no padding, which was great because I was starting to get those hot spots from the gel padded gloves over there. And these are the half fingers. Um, I noticed uh, starting in Missouri, it was so humid that I just rode without gloves because the gloves were wet the entire time. So I was kind of getting those wrinkly hands and uh, pretty uncomfortable. So yeah, I used those um, as long as I could, and then I just went to no gloves. I uh, mailed the socks back, the heavy duty socks in Walden, and I picked up, um, I had mailed these out to Walden. These are ankle socks, and these are the Darn Tough Merino Wool. Uh, that's another company that I really like, their socks. Um, in my personal opinion, they work much better than Smart Wool. Uh, I think the last thing I didn't go over in terms of um, 
what I brought for spares and stuff. This is a uh, TYR bag. I think it's a one liter bag that I bought on Amazon. And I've had that for, I've had this bag for about 15,000 miles. It just kind of keeps your tools a little bit drier. Um, it's easy to stuff in whether you have a half frame pack or whatever. And this is typically, this is what I'll take for tools when I ride daily or on a long ride. I have a little set here of Allen keys starting at, I believe five. So it goes five, four, three. And then I had a two and a half and a two. Uh, one tire lever, Pedro's tire lever. Uh, you don't really use that too much with tubeless tires. I have a, um, this is a reversible screwdriver for tuning derailers. So I have a flathead in case I ever need to pry something. And the Phillips head. This is a 25 millimeter uh, hex key for the Avid BB7 brakes if I have to tow them in. On the back, sometimes you can't turn them with their hand they get a, they get a little bit of dirt in there so you use this little guy and there's a couple other parts that use that sometimes on on various bikes uh park tool chain tool um when i originally bought this this is a ct5 i bought a couple extra of these pins uh sometimes those can break but um i haven't had to replace that pin so maybe i'll replace it just because i have a few extras um, just as preventative maintenance and then uh, something I would recommend for everybody because it's so lightweight and extremely usable is the Leatherman Squirt PS4 I think they're you know maybe 20 to 30 bucks but on that you get a knife you get a set of pliers um, you get a couple extra things that might just be useful so um, I think that's it for my gear uh it depends on what your strategy is if you're doing the trans am bike race i think i carried just the right amount of gear because i had to sleep outside quite a bit i just looked at kind of the race profile and it looks like i only had nine tents set up which means there's only nine times where i stopped more than four hours which means uh, i slept a lot outside my bivy bag i remember i got i I did stay in a hotel four different times, and I think I stayed in four different post offices. So that means out of the 17 and a half days it took me, there was nine days that I slept outside. So for me, carrying that little bit of extra weight, you kind of have to do it. Um, but yeah, it's like you can you can sleep in hotels, you can sleep in post offices, just as long as you are respectful uh, in, in terms of the post offices. And there's not like 12 of you staying in there. Um, but yeah, if that's uh, any of this gear you have questions about, um, I'm pretty honest with my gear. If I don't like it, I'm going to tell you. And most of the stuff I like, uh, the jacket, I had to get a cycling jacket because they don't have hoods. If I could have gotten an outdoor research or a Patagonia jacket that didn't have a hood, I would certainly use one of those, um, but the Pearl Azumi ended up working okay for what I needed it for. Uh, and then the gloves. Yeah, just the padded gloves. Some people like them. Uh, they just add hot spots for me. But yeah, get out and ride your bike. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you're having a good day. It's getting hot here in Illinois. And I'm um, rebuilding the giant bicycle. So, all right. Love you lots. Happy 4th of July.